Hi and welcome. After spending about 10 minutes looking at the radar of the JF-17, the KJL-7, I noticed a few things that baffled me. Since I am not sure whether I am missing something or there is an actual problem, I thought I would record this quick video and see what you guys think. These are the issues, later explained in more detail. Instantaneous track while scan, unrestricted track while scan, zero Doppler and contacts illumination, lack of proper English manual, InstaTwist. When I test a new module, I open one of my ad hoc looping missions and sit down and watch the radar scope. This is where I immediately noticed something funny. What you are looking at is range while search 1B 15 degrees. Look what happens if I switch to track while scan. The tracks are already there. Curious, isn't it? As we know, TWS is limited to certain combinations of bars and azimuth to illuminate contacts at a fixed interval. The avionics computes changes between each refresh and determines tracks and other information. Needless to say, this is a great radar mode for situational awareness, but in real life, it is pretty bad for engaging targets. In DCS, it is instead the rule. Back to the KJL-7, here is the question. If the avionics can compute tracks from RWS at such a low volume, why it is constrained when the selected mode is track while scan? In other modules, switching from RWS to TWS takes a certain amount of time for tracks to be rebuilt. Unconstrained twiz? While checking the quick guide for the data link information, I noticed a couple of neat features and another curious fact. Once the dedicated display is set up, it shows contact tracks when the KJL-7 is in track while scan, plus additional information from other donors. But look what happens if I am the only JF-17 in the mission and I switch from track while scan to range while search. Let's set a small high refresh rate volume and watch the display. See there? Similarly to the previous point I raised, RWS is capable of generating and updating tracks. This means I can now set my radar beyond the limitations of TWIZ, for instance, 60 degrees 4 bars, and see the tracks anyway. Zero Doppler. The AWG-9 of the F-14 Tomcat has two major blind spots when operated in high pulse repetition frequency, pulse Doppler mode. One is the MLC filter, or main lobe clutter filter, which prevents ground returns from being displayed. Simply put, this is what causes notching targets to disappear. The second is the ZDF, or Zero Doppler filter, representing the case where the Doppler effect is absent or minimal. For instance, when the fighter and bandit travel in the same direction at the same speed. The AWUG-9 has a plus minutes 100 knots bracket where contacts vanish. Other modules represent Zero Doppler, but here I notice something curious. Namely, contacts are not always dropped. I have not found a pattern yet, but I wonder if SN simulation, assuming it is implemented, may cause such behavior. No English manual. Some of the simple questions I raised in this video may find an answer in the manual. But there is no manual. Only a quick guide has been translated into English, as the more comprehensive document is still in Chinese. Although Google Translate exists, this makes the learning process much slower. Personally, I am not really happy about this situation and I would like to see the complete manual properly translated into English. Conclusions Of course, 10 minutes is nowhere near enough time to judge a module and that is not the point of the video either. The points I raised are not a critique at all but rather sheer curiosity about this aeroplane. The KJL-7 in particular is worth a deeper look. I noticed a couple of nice touches, which I will cover in a later video if you want to see more about the JF-17. Thanks for watching and take care.